Hi guys, Popcat here. Um, so today's tutorial, I'm going to give you uh, one on doing circles using beams and pillars. Um, and what you can do, so how to do this, um, sort of the technique for what you can do further than this, um, and some examples of some of the stuff I've created using this technique. Um, so if you like what you see, please click the like button below. And uh, if you want to continue seeing my content, then uh, click the subscribe button below. So I've done some prep work on here. So the first thing we're going to do is just create an eight meter circle, uh, eight meter radius circle, sorry. Um, so what I've done is I've just created a 10 meter painted beam off the floor just to give us a starting point um, and then put a big metal pillar on top. You can do this with pretty much all of the pillars. So the big metal one, the big concrete one, the small concrete one, the small metal one um, and the frame ones as well. Um, it just the smaller ones take slightly longer because obviously there's going to be more in the in the gap that you're going to fill. Um, but what we'll do here, we'll do an eight meter radius one just for starters. Um, so what I've done is I've gone up eight meters with a painted beam from this point, from the center point of the uh, bottom pillar, and just put a marker down just so we know where the center point of the rotation is going to be. Um, I've then gone out ninety degrees on each angle. Um, and put a big metal pillar there just so we've got some marker points um, as to where we need to be and what we need to aim for um, and also just to tidy things up on the way around. Um, so what we'll do, um, so we'll do a rotation um, from this point here to roughly this point here. It's going to be slightly shorter than this um, but this will help tidy things up and, and just continue things around. Um, so because we're going to work on this one um, we're just going to move this one out slightly so we'll just create another one here and just remove that one for the time being and we'll start from the bottom point here and go upwards to this point so what we'll do is we'll just grab another painted beam and go into freeform mode and we're going to go to the bottom pillar and we're going to go to the outside middle point there just like that so we'll have a slight angle on it and we'll grab another big metal pillar and we'll go from the center point switch into zoop mode and go from the center point out to the edge. Um, remove these ones, because we don't need those. And again, we'll just go out from the center point to the outside edge. And it's just basically a case of rinse and repeat this. So obviously the bigger the circle you're gonna do, the uh, more, more rotations and the more pillars you're gonna need, um, and the longer a time it takes. So um, just to give you an example, um, after a couple of tries, you can probably get the uh, 40 meter one, which is the maximum length of the painted beam. Um, so it's not too bad once you once you actually get going, it's not too bad because you'll just get into the swing of things. But it's always going from the center point out. So on this point, what we'll do, because we're getting quite close to this um, and we've actually overlapped this 90 degree one, we'll just pop this one back in. Uh, using the soft clearance we can overwrite that so as you can see we've got a nice sort of smooth curve here on the outside um, obviously the smaller rotation ones won't have as nice a side uh, nicer outside and won't be as circular on the outside um, but you'll still get the circular shape on there um, so just to give you some examples of some of the stuff you can uh, create using this technique uh, so this is the 80 meter 80 meter diameter um, circle using the same technique, all large pillars. Um, and as you can see here, I've started going out to the side on this one to create a tube effect. Um, so the way you do this is do your circle first, um, and then grab another uh, big metal pillar and just align it to the side like that. You have to move the mouse up and down to um, get the right point. Um, but you'll see that this, the surface will go absolutely spot on with the side of the circle here. Uh, lock one off and then we'll just go out from there uh, just zoop out from each point um, and then it's just a case of rinse and repeat all the way through until you've got your tube complete just like that so it's all lined up nicely um, and as with the smaller one you get a nice sort of pattern effect on the outside um, and if you've done it right the um, the pattern should sort of line up with the um, the pattern you've got on the main circle as well so as you can see here, we've got a line that sort of joins and, and is continuous uh, with the pattern we've got on the circle. 
So just to give you some examples of some of the stuff that I've um, created using this technique. The next thing I'd like to show you is a 180 degree train curve. Um, so this is all done using a central rotation point, but the rotation point is raised by 0.2 meters each time. Um, so it's slightly, slightly time consuming, um, but the effect is pretty cool. So the next thing I'd like to show you is a 90 degree upwards pipe bend that I've tried to do um, using the same sort of techniques. Um, but unfortunately it doesn't quite work um, as the beam rotation doesn't lock properly. Um, so I can show you a quick example of that. So as you can see here on the hologram mode, you can see the beam is actually following the path of the, um, the upwards pillars that I've put in place. Um, however, when you lock that off, it jumps back to the normal horizontal uh, positioning. So when you're trying to do the circles on each one of these, so what you'd need to do is for each of these bits on here, um, you'd need to do a separate circle. So it would take a while, um, but without that rotation there for the pillar, um, all you're going to get is a, a straight tube effect, basically. So this is a, a similar technique to that, but just using a, t a slight twist on each of the pillars going upwards, um, just to create this really interesting shape. And then again, using this technique, um, this is so this is a train curve um, using a rotation point out here. Um, I've done one curve on this point and then another curve on the outside edge as well. Um, and then just merge the two and put the train track on top. So if you want to go all in with this technique, you can do something like this. Um, so this is an 80 meter diameter sphere, uh, all done using small concrete pillars. Uh, about 60,000 plus small concrete pillars all placed by hand on this. Um, and about 170 hours work to do. Um, so the outside is pretty smooth. There's a couple of kinks, um, small blemishes in it uh, where I removed the uh, rotation point. Um, but it, go it just goes to show what's actually possible with the vanilla version of the game. So this is the inside of the the cube. So this is the inside of the sphere. Um, as you can see, it's pretty smooth all the way around. Um, and we can actually drive vehicles on, on the inside of this, so the Explorer will work fine on here as well. Um, and as you can see, there's a little factory cart taking a, a well-needed brake lesson at uh, a very, very strange angle. Yeah, enough said. Uh, so this is the next thing I'd like to show you. So this is using the same technique, but with the circle um, on the horizontal rather than the vertical. Um, and again, I've just gone up using um, the same technique for doing the tube. Uh, but using this one, you can actually put the uh, conveyor wall in the side to create a little exit. Um, and then you can also put the windows in and they look pretty cool. So all I've done here is just done the tube to start with, take a couple out um, and then slotted the window in. Um, then you can do doors like this on the inside as well. So this is my overlap, overlap door technique. Um, but as you can see, they sort of disappear into the walls, which is pretty cool. Um, so this was the original start of a dome that I tried. Um, as you can see, just for scale, that's the nuclear reactor building, uh, which fits inside quite nicely. Um, so this is another example of something you can use using the um, circular technique. So this is um, part of a train bridge I've tried to create, um, just an example of what you can do. Um, so the entrance and exit of the train curve are all done using normal foundations. And then the actual curve itself is all done using small concrete pillars on this. Um, but you can get two, train tra two, two trains running side by side, no problems at all. Um, and then you can actually create the um, bridge supports as well using this technique. So I've gone from a center point on this point out to this point here, and then just gone out from the top. So a bit like the circle, but just a small chunk and then filled in. Uh, so this is another example of um, something I'm working on at the moment. So this is five tubes all together. 
Um, so I've started from the front on this one um, and gone back out using the tube technique um, and then just added some windows on the front. Uh, then you can use another arc on the bottom to create like supports for this one. As you can see here on this one, I've added water extractors to the bottom um, and run the pipes up the arc and then just created um, some little holes in the bottom just for the pipes to go through. So at the back of this building, uh, we've got a half tube created using the um, big metal big frame pillars um, just to create a like, roof structure over the water extractors here. Um, but as you can see, they knit together quite well um, and look pretty cool, actually. Um, I've then done a slightly smaller tube uh, for the pipes to go down. Um, but just to show you what's possible to fit in these, so as you can see, I've got 16 coal generators in each section on the top. So one last thing I thought I'd show you before we end this video. Um, about 6.20 in the morning, if we look at the side of one of these tubes, um, we'll get a, a wonderful view. Uh, so that's it for this video, guys. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. Um, and if you like what you see, don't forget to click that like button. Um, and if you want to see more of my stuff, then click the subscribe button as well. Um, and look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.